Welcome back to Rome Boys. On this episode, we are in Texarkana at the Sacred Heart Church here in Texarkana. Yeah. Join us as we tour this beautiful church and check out its stained glass windows. Oh, here we go. <laughs> What we love about this church is there's over 50 stained glass windows. And we know about our faith, that Jesus is the center of the faith. As you see in this church, the tabernacle is in the center. That's exactly where he should be. But in the stained glass windows, it talks about the life of Jesus Christ in about 50 windows, which is great. And we'll see later windows uh, dedicated to Our Lady. But I haven't been to very many churches that cover the entire story of Jesus's life from the Annunciation and then we have the visitation and so forth and so on. We have Annunciation, Visitation, Joseph and Mary journeying to Bethlehem. Now there's one that you don't see every day. Then the Nativity, the shepherds with their flock, and the presentation with Simeon. So you got the joyful mysteries there, but you also have a little bit of uh, extra stories that we see in the Gospel of Luke. A lot of the stories that really you never see in stained glass windows. Exactly. Or maybe you see one or two, but all of them together at the same time, it's very rare. And then we get into Matthew's Gospel over here with the three magi visit the newborn king. And the eighth stained glass window is Herod's sins, his soldiers to find Jesus and the slaughter of the innocents that we celebrate a few days after Jesus' birth. So already persecution and suffering is happening. I can't say that we've ever seen that stained glass window. Mm -mm. Yeah. I've never seen that stained glass window yeah, yeah, yeah. in any church. That's one, even the next few where it talks about, you know, Joseph. Yeah, the angel visits the Joseph. Angel visits yeah. Joseph. Another one. A great one to see. Occasionally, you do see the flight into Egypt. I think I I've do seen like that see the angel with the Joseph. Like, hey, you, buddy, up, dude? go this way. Yeah. <laughs> we always talk about as men, like God, like why don't you just tell us exactly what you want? Because we'll do it. Right? <laughs> and so he got directions. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we always will talk about having. You know, if you would just tell us, we'd yes. do it. Here he's being told. Uh -huh. Maybe we're just not listening. I think that's probably a lot of it. Now, here's one that Joe and I weren't sure about. So the Holy Family at Nazareth. So they settle into Nazareth, the one there with the Red Cross. And um, that's going to be home base. That's going to be where they live. You know, I just picture the, the, the home, the house when, when I visited the Holy Land. And I'm picturing it right now. So um, pretty cool stuff. And then another one here, Jesus teaches in the temple. Well, sure, we hear about that in the story of the find the temple. But there's the scribes and he's... Uh, listening and asking questions and just a different perspective. Usually you just see the next window there, the finding in the temple. That's again usually covered with Mary and Joseph. So I like that. Uh, and he's sitting there holding the scriptures as well. Mm -hmm. Old Testament, of course. Right, right. <laughs> but he's the fulfillment. In, yeah. in, the next one well, you never see. Right. I have never seen that window before. Any that guess, is. people? Yeah. <laughs> Who would you think? Yeah. It is. So we know we know that Joseph is in the window before, and Jesus is around is twelve years old. So the death of Joseph, with all the angels around him there. Of course, we don't know how soon Joseph died, but we do think he lived a few years later. Right, so. Obviously, you know, teaching him and growing up and teaching Joseph the trade of uh, being carpenter, construction worker. You know, used it with his hands. So, but uh, yeah, we don't. That you know is hard. That's not in scripture. So, yeah, we know that Joseph died, though. So it's a, <laughs> so it's a little bit of tradition. There oh you go. Goodness. Sacred right. tradition, of course. And then you look down, and I'm like, automatically, I'm thinking, that's the devil, right? And right. so the temptation on the mount there, and kind of you see the city, like, I'll give you all of this, Jesus, you know? Yeah. And it is. 40 days without eating, oh. Joe. Oy. <laughs> I can't go 40 minutes without uh, eating. You're better than me, though. <laughs> 
And then the first miracle, the wedding at Cana. So now we start those luminous mysteries. And here comes the party. He's changing water into wine. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And then the, John the Baptist baptizes Jesus in the Jordan. If I'm not mistaken, I think I see that in another window right over here, Joe. Oh, sure so is. Double baptism. <laughs> Well, it is important. I mean, absolutely. That's the beginning of our salvation, right? There you go. The sacraments. Yeah. Okay. Here's definitely one I've never seen. Traveled the world. Jesus chooses four apostles. Peter, yeah. James, John, Jude. Maybe? I suppose. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. I have not seen that one before. And then Jesus drives the vendors from the temple. So notice the whip there. And he's... Uh, it was righteous anger. Mm -hmm. Righteous anger. Obviously not sinful, right? We no. can be angry if God calls us to. Jesus converts the Samaritan woman. Familiar Give story me a drink, there. woman. That's it. <laughs> and then but the, he was offering her a drink. She, I mean, right. He asked her for a drink, but yeah. she, he was really offering her a drink. Yeah, I'm picturing there the what is it? The Chosen series. Mm. Yeah, that's that scene there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then another one, first teaching in Judea. How many okay. of you could figure that one out? No. We didn't. No. <laughs> mm. I just assumed it was the Sermon on the Mount. But right, no. and definitely first teaching. teaching. But yeah, so I guess, was that first teaching, I'm trying to remember, is that was that with the apostles? Or most, well, it was disciples, obviously, but... Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if that was the first one. Mm -hmm. I guess in that, how he's moving from place to place, drawing uh, emphasis to that. There you go. And the miracle of the official son at Capernaum. So notice the Roman garb and, and nope, he's healed. <laughs> so yeah, you can go home from he's... a distance. <laughs> and they ran up to him. And that was like, probably one of my favorite stories because we know we hear that in mass, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm not worthy that you should yeah. enter under my roof, but just say the words and you shall be healed. You know, and I was, I don't know why that's my favorite story because mm. it says that, you know, Jesus was amazed by his faith. Ah. Like, Jesus was amazed? Wow, that's impressive. I mean, really? Can you really surprise God? Yeah, but right. But that was, I don't know, that's always struck me. Yeah, absolutely. And the miracle, the fishes that was caught by the four apostles. Notice the halo around Peter. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Getting him ready to be fisher of men. And isn't it constant? I mean, I just always find that funny that, you know, they never caught any fish unless Jesus was around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they had to make a living and do it every once in a while. They yeah. had to, right? Yeah. Just like as a farmer, Joe, you got to have a harvest every once in a while. But yeah. Gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Not when Jesus is around. Now, the call of who here? Here's a hint. He, it's a person. They're probably a gospel writer because they're holding uh, the Bible, the book. Um, in a book, he's writing. He has a halo, so he's a saint. And we don't see any hints here, so... Let's mm. assume it's a gospel, so you have one out of a four chance. Yeah. One out of four, what do you think? And I would go with... Matthew. The first one. Is what they tell us. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he's so the first good. gospel, so... There you go. Although he wasn't the first one to write one, but True. anyways, yeah. So, gospel of Matthew. And I'll just... One second here. We just yeah. got to get a shot of this sure. beautiful altar. And crucifix, I mean, this church, this sanctuary part is just beautiful. So it's a, a newer church in the sense that it's not like 100 years old, but it's well Built in the 60s, designed, I believe, yeah. Right? So you got crucifix, Mary, Sacred Heart of Jesus, tabernacles, beautiful, candles, angels, candles on this altar. They do ad orientum here. So the priest Explain that one. faces... The tabernacle faces Jesus and is praying on behalf of the people for Christ, to Christ. Um, and it's the focus is not putting the priest as the focus, but Jesus is the, mm -hmm. the center of the, of the liturgy. So more and more priests are doing that. And um, I think that's one of the things that Vatican II, uh, hopefully we'll see more and more of, that uh, the priest will face towards uh, the tabernacle and, and uh, as representative as the priest to um, give us the Lord. Now we both had the privilege of attending Mass here during when he was saying it. How do you pronounce that word again? Ad Orientum. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not going to try. Mm -hmm. And it was just a beautiful service and it really kind of got the feel of this is how Vatican II wanted it to be done. Right. And uh, 
yeah, we really do hope it catches on yeah. and get some things straightened out. It definitely so. gets your focus on why we're here for him mm -hmm. and not for ourselves. Oh, it's I, just the way it's set up is just really awesome. Right. Really beautiful. Beautiful music, altar servers, yeah. the smells and bells, they say. So. One of the really cool things about this church is it, was it every day at three o'clock? Mm -hmm. Every day at three Or at least most days of the week, yeah. Most days of the week, three to four, they have adoration yeah. every day. So, Divine mercy, yeah, benediction, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then confession. When do they, confession, I think they mm -hmm. do every day, confession. Uh, well, most of the days of the week, yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. nice. talk yeah. about being there for the people. Uh -huh. That's amazing. So, another tough one, Jesus chooses seven last apostles. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes. Again, never seen that before. Yeah. The next one should be easy. I mean, hmm, let's let's look at that. He's, He's sitting on, on a rock. A. <laughs> yeah. And there's it on the mount. Yes. Well, I think isn't that the feeding of the 5,000? There's two fish and loaves. Well, it all happened at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that went on there. Yes. But uh, that's what our our list says. <laughs> And then the parable of the Good Samaritan. I can't say that I've ever seen Again. a window like that. Right. I mean, you see the two guys walking off, you know, the two Jews mm -hmm. leaving the other Jewish man. Yeah. And then the Samaritan comes out of nowhere and, and does the takes right care thing. of him. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't say that I've ever seen that window mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm hmm. I mean, every once in a while, in most churches you see pictures of or, uh, stained glass windows of saints, and there are some here. We'll get to those here in a little bit. But no, never the parable. I don't remember seeing yeah, any parables. And then look at the rest of the next ones. I mean, here, the cure of the crippled woman. Again, right. that's a story that gets glossed over most times. Yeah. The, the parable of the prodigal son. Now, of course, that's super popular, like the Good Samaritan, the most popular parables. But... Yeah. A window that we can actually okay picture it he got yeah. so bad that he wanted to eat what the pigs were eating yeah yeah i think yeah. what's significant about that story that we don't really think about is that you know he's feeding pigs and he's by jewish law not allowed to eat mm, pigs yeah, so pork. he's eating the food of an animal he can't eat himself yeah which makes him unclean wow and then he's literally unclean with the pigs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rock bad. bottom. Rock bottom. And the raising of Lazarus. Now oh, I know. This is the coolest thing. When I first saw that with the old Jesus of Nazareth, the six-hour version, and he comes out and he's all draped up and he's walking as a dead man out. You're like, whoa, that's just like, hello. Yeah, he was actually dead. Four days, starting to smell, <laughs> you know. And then he is alive wow that just uh if all the other miracles didn't impress you i mean he's raising people from the dead what yeah. that's that's god <laughs> that is definitely a window i know i've never seen so yes but the next one i know i haven't seen that one either the anointing of mary as she mary magdalene as she washes the feet of jesus Joe mentioned blonde hair, but <laughs> yeah, I've never, seen, I've never pictured Mary I'm Magdalene not so as sure, blonde. But, <laughs> so, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. She kind of looks like Goldilocks right there. But. There you go. <laughs> yes. Now we've seen this one before. Yes, Palm Sunday, the entry into Jerusalem, Hosanna in the highest, and then some of those people might be saying something else in a <laughs> yeah. in a few days on Good Friday. How fast the mob can change their minds. Mm. How fast they can change their tone. Which is good about... We don't ever see that in today's world, do we? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. What's good about this Last Supper scene is you can see that's kind of how they sat. You know, lounging a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah. around and... Uh, around the table. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, the two shaking hands. Mm. Or holding hands, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Judas on the end there, Obviously, you can say? tell Judas there. Yeah. And then John laying on his chest and... Yeah, one I thought they all sat betrayed. on one side of the table. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the agony in the garden, my, by far my very favorite mystery of the rosary. Just uh, how he sweat blood and um, saw the sins of the world. And he needed strength. So he shows the human side and the divine side. It's interesting, he's wearing all red mm. in this. And the passion begins. <laughs> yeah. And then the angel administering to him. Yes. And Peter and the boys sleeping. And crashed. <laughs> it's been a long night, Jesus. Yeah. 
the will is strong, but the flesh is weak. Jesus before um, the high priest. Well, what, is that right? No, no. I think in that the next one, Judas we betraying him. We got a typo here. So yes, yes. Because uh -oh. uh, he's being Jesus arrested. arrested. The next one. So yeah, this is when. Um, yeah, he's yeah being... Judas betrays him with the kiss. Thirty mm -hmm. pieces of silver there. Yeah, you see the bag. You see the soldiers bound. You know, tying him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a betrayal there. Then the next one. Yeah, there's the high priest one. Then on to guess that one. Yes. I mean, that one should be fairly easy. You see a fire. You mm -hmm. see Jesus bound and arrested, looking down on a man who is talking to somebody else. Yeah. And then there's a rooster. Yeah. Can Peter. we guess that one? Peter denies Peter Jesus. Peter denies Jesus. Three the times. Cock crows, you will deny me three times. Yep. Then would you say that one is... Jesus before Pilate. Pilate before Pilate. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh yeah, he's wearing the Roman garb. There's the fount where he washes his hands. Says, nope, I'm done with this. Yeah, yeah. Can't blame me for this one. Yeah. But you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our sins cause Jesus to die, so. Well, I find it interesting too, because people wonder, wonder why, like in the creed, when we say Pontius Pilate's suffered name, under Pontius Pilate, suffered yeah. under Pontius Pilate. Why is he in the creed? Mm. Well, that's kind of to tie it in that this is historical. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't some fairy tale. That yeah. You can look it up. Pontius Pilate was actually a person. Yeah. He lived around that same time and, or in that time. Yeah. Roman yeah. records show Roman that. Roman records yeah. show that. So yeah. he is kind of the tie that this is historical. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why he suffered under Pontius Pilate in the creed. And then the scourging at the pillar and watch the passion and you'll think no that window there is not accurate because no. <laughs> he really did get uh, slaughtered well i mean sins. art and movies can only depict so much yes and talk about if they were to have it the true mm -hmm. crucifixion on how he looked it or, scourging, or what they yeah. were scourging uh -huh. what they did to him that'd be way past rated r yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. mean you're getting into he horror was, flick now i mean he was it was just shredded be, Shredded, yeah, it would be horrible. And then crowning with thorns, mocking him, and prophesy, Jesus. Yep. You're the king, right? Yeah. Save yourself, save yourself. Mm -hmm. well, I guess that's Simon of Cyrene helping uh -huh. him carry the cross. Uh huh. Changed his world, that's for sure. Mm hmm. And the crucifixion. crucifixion. So this stained glass window here is Our Lady. We call that the Pieta. If you go to the Sistine Chapel, you'll see Mary holding um, the dead Jesus. So this is when Jesus is buried in the tomb. You see the crown of thorns on the ground there, but the hope of resurrection at the top of the window there. And then, of course, the resurrection with the resurrection flag there and the angel and then the guard asleep underneath there. Then we have the ascension, and there's the apostles looking up. Then Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming down, the birthday of the church with Our Lady there present. Here's a couple windows that you don't see every day. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's in heaven as King of the universe. And the last one here, Jesus will return judging the living and the dead, which gave Joe and I some of the heebie-jeebies, I guess you can say, because we're like, oh yeah, we're going to be judged. We need to always remember that. And God willing, Jesus' mercy will be enough to get us into heaven. <laughs> we yeah. pray for God's forgiveness and His mercy upon us as God the Father is there. And, yeah, that's and like Jesus. a wake-up call yeah. uh, window there. It. Yeah, I mean, you can see, even see the marks on His feet, His mm -hmm. hands. I mean, but then that red dagger. Yeah. Yeah, that one kind of gives you the chills. There you go. It's like, ooh. Wake up, Catholics. Yeah. I mean, we have a video on that. Ouch. Wake up, Catholics. So. Wake up, Catholics, <laughs> for sure. What's cool about this little area here is kind of like a side chapel. Yeah, I, I feel you feel like you're in a grotto. Yeah, because it's private, and we both sat here for for mass, and you feel like you're part of mass, but you're also in like a Marian shrine. And uh, these mm. six stained glass windows are dedicated to Our Lady, Our Lady of Lords. There you can see Bernadette at the bottom, and the, the rosary, and Our Lady of Guadalupe, which we'll see over here in a statue form in a second. Here's a good one. Again, uh, a new one. 
Our Lady, the co-redemptrix of the world. Oh, wow. There you okay. have it. Yeah, how she leads us, like Totus Tuus, she leads us to her son as the Redeemer. Our Lady of Czechoslovakia. Never seen that one before. Yeah, yeah. Our Lady of La Salette. Again. La Salette. Another. Okay. Not as common one. And then, and then of course. A common one, Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima. Now, Joe, you've been to the actual shrine yes. of Our Lady of Guadalupe, but this is just, yeah. A beautiful totally, statue. It really is. And I love how they actually painted kind of the tilma behind it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So what's really kind of neat about the statue being out on away from the tilma itself is that's kind of how the paint, it's not paint, mm. but the image is really hovering above the tilma itself. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a cool portrayal of that yeah. with a statue. And of course, roses here and the infant of Prague over here. I mean, that's oh something that uh, it was, was more popular and that devotion's kind of fading. So it's good to see Jesus uh, still around. And then what's cool about this here is a mosaic. You know, each piece is on there, glued on there put together into the form of, this is Our Lady of Perpetual Help. So you got stained glass windows, form of art, you have statues, you have mosaics. Um, they have frescoes and they have all kinds of other ways of, of art, but... Uh, now this church has it all. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's a more modern type architecture. Uh, like I said, it was built in the 60s after I believe the previous one uh, burned down. And so it does have that built, being built in the 60s has that kind of post-Vatican mm -hmm. II architecture, but they've recently done some remodeling here and adding the stained glass windows in this beautiful sanctuary here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they, I think they believe they have some plans, Father Braun here has, uh, has some plans for it for future construction, so. So you can take a modern church and make it aesthetically beautiful to where it lifts people up to the heavens. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, obviously the older churches of Europe and other places, cathedrals and churches that are 100 years old, they're amazing, they're beautiful, but uh, they, this is beautiful. You can yes, really pray here. Is. And, uh, and what I find interesting too, even though the architect, well, I shouldn't say even though, the architecture is more modern, but the liturgy is so much mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. kind of closer to traditional. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's really, it really is beautiful. It really is a beautiful liturgy. Love that sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And that crucifix is huge. And then a side Another chapel over here for, and they may be doing mass here in a second. Looks like they're preparing uh, for it, yeah. Yes, yeah. And lots of people haven't experienced the old liturgy there. And yeah. we have Therese over here. and. In the corner statue, the, the Divine Mercy uh, image from Faustina, and then Saint Ursula and Saint Margaret Mary Ellacoke. Hmm. Those are saints you don't see. Yes. <laughs> Those are saints you don't see every day. Yeah. They have a huge foyer coming into this church. I know you usually come. I don't know why we didn't start the video at the entrance. But <laughs> that's okay. But as you come in. It really is huge, and they have this amazing St. Michael statue. Yes. I mean, that's probably over, that's probably close to five feet tall. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Look at the muscles, man. Yeah. St. Michael's ripped. It's going to take down the <clears throat> devil. Yeah. Upcoming events. <laughs> yeah. And then St. Joseph. Yeah. Of course. Is that wood? I mean, that looks it like it. It sure a, looks like it. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. What a carp. Well, that was. That perhaps All may crooked. have been in the old church. Who knows? I don't know. You know what? That's true. Some of the it looks more of the 60s-esque. Kind of. Yeah. And then St. Anthony, my bud, over here. St. Anthony. You see him almost everywhere. Yeah. That in St. Anthony and, of course, St. Therese, mm -hmm. which we saw earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, pretty the most common. Pretty now, common. what's cool or interesting about this church is that right here used to be outside hmm. they added this large foyer coming in 
And this actually here was the outside of the church. So that large statue of Jesus was sitting actually outside and they added all of this, which I think they did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Really is truly a beautiful church. Mm -hmm. Come and visit. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this tour of this beautiful Sacred Heart Church here in Texarkana on the Texas side. In the meantime, be bold. Be real. Be, be Catholic. Catholic. God, God bless. bless.